This is Cindy Ingram, and welcome to the Art Class Curator Podcast, where we're taking art out of the dark with thoughtful explorations and in-depth interviews designed to ignite curiosity and delight in art classrooms everywhere. Hi, this is Cindy Ingram of Art Class Curator, and welcome to the very first episode of the Art Class Curator podcast. My website has just had its fourth birthday. That is four years of empowering art teachers with the confidence and skills they need to make artworks come alive for their students. It has been a thrilling journey, and I know that the future will be even better as the Art Class Curator community continues to grow and thrive. I am so excited to bring you the Art Class Curator podcast. I have been thinking about creating a podcast for years, and I am so thrilled to be launching this brand new project. Each episode of the Art Class Curator podcast will dive deep into different aspects of teaching art. There will be passionate art educators sharing their work, mini trainings on art appreciation strategies that you can use in your classroom, and conversations about the many highs and occasional lows of being a teacher. Just to give you a taste of what is to come, you'll hear my interview with Megan Hildebrandt, an artist, art teacher, and cancer patient who brings her students into the healthcare system to teach them empathy and what it means to be a patient or a caregiver and how to use art to respond to life's challenges. In my interview with Dr. Katie Monin, she tells a chilling story of what happened in her classroom on September 11th and how that changed her teaching forever. It was her first year of teaching. High school art teacher Brad LaDuke tells us how to honor unsung heroes in art with powerful tales of project-based learning that allow students to share their voice. And Amber Jordan, Monica Wright, and I open up about the struggles of teaching art when you're a highly sensitive introvert. We talk about the impact of sensory overload and anxiety and share our own coping strategies. Susan Riley of Education Closet shares her extraordinary expertise in arts integration. Michael Linson tells us how to create a calm and controlled learning environment where we are excited about teaching and our students are excited about learning. Holly Best Kincaid teaches us about global understanding through her diverse and inspiring students. Nick Hahn from Minnie Matisse shares how she brings the local community into her classroom while also connecting students around the globe. And that is just the beginning. At the end of each episode, I ask my guests the same question, which artwork changed your life? And these stories I have to tell you are incredible. And each one tells us something new about the person that we're interviewed, tells us something new about ourselves and our reaction to art. And you can see all of the different ways that people are connecting with art. I am loving these answers. But I wanted to give you the chance to hear my answer to that question because I do have one artwork that changed my life. Actually, I have many artworks that changed my life, but I do have one in particular. And on January 1st of 2004, I was a couple years out of college. I had gotten my art history degree from the University of Texas at Austin. At the time, I was applying to get my PhD in art history. I was going to continue my deep dive into studying what I loved, which is art history. And so I was applying to different universities. And in 2004, the MoMA Museum in New York City was closed for a renovation. They brought all of the famous art from the MoMA to Texas. And I live in the DFW area, so it was just a short four-hour drive down to Houston to the Museum of Fine Arts Houston. And I got to see all of the greats, the Starry Night, the Persistence of Memory, those Kandinsky paintings, you know, all of the wonderful art from the MoMA. But the artwork that spoke to me the most was Picasso's Girl Before a Mirror. When I was walking through, I turned the corner and I saw that painting and I felt like I had been punched in the gut. Like It grabbed me and it would not let go. I started to cry. <laughs> I looked at it for a very long time. My husband was went through the entire rest of the exhibit and I was still in front of that painting. And it changed the whole direction of my career because at the time I wanted to study art history and get really immersed in it. And I started to worry as I was looking at this painting that was impacting me so emotionally, I started to worry that the art would lose its magic if I studied it too much. You know, if I got too ingrained in the details, that at what point does art become something I'm studying and not something I'm experiencing? And The feeling was amazing and scary and exciting all at the same time. And at that moment, even though I already knew I wanted to be some sort of educator, I had already had experience teaching in the museum setting, I knew 
at that moment that I needed to dedicate the rest of my career to helping other people experience what I experienced in front of that painting, that I need other people to know what it's like to connect with a work of art on that level. So I ditched all of my applications to get my PhD and I then applied for a fellowship for art education and got my master's in art education instead. And here I am today. And it is still, you know, that was 2004 and it is now 2018 and art has not lost its magic. I've dedicated the last 14 and a half years to studying art and I still feel that way when I look at art. And I never know what to expect when I go to a museum. I never know what's going to grab me, but something always does. So I love this question and I love this story. And I would love for you to share your own story about which artwork changed your life. So if you could get onto Facebook or Instagram or Twitter and share your story with the hashtag art class curator. I would love to hear your answer to the question, which artwork changed your life? Because these stories are so powerful. And if you haven't thought about one artwork that has made a difference on you, I encourage you to do it. Art is so powerful when it makes a connection and teachers are so powerful when they connect with their students and their craft. So the educators featured on this podcast come from different places and backgrounds. We all have different teaching philosophies and different focuses in our education, but All these educators that I am featuring have the same earnest desire to ignite the passion of art in their students. And their thoughts and stories have already enriched my life so much and made me a better teacher. And I am so honored to share their conversations with you. Have a great day. Thank you so much for listening. If you like what you hear, please subscribe and give us an honest rating on iTunes. This will help other teachers find us and hear these amazing stories. Do you want even more art inspiration? Sign up for Art Class Curator's once a week email newsletter, your weekly art break. Teacher Sarah Warnock says, I truly do take a break from my busy week to check out all your links and feel inspired. Everything you share is relevant, meaningful, and also super helpful. You definitely help me become a better art teacher and I look forward to your emails each week. You can sign up at artclasscurator.com slash art break. And as a free gift for subscribing, you'll get six free art interpretation worksheets to use in your classroom. Be sure to tune in next week for more inspiring art interviews.